Video game consoles are like grandparents, where in the young years, you think it'll last forever. You love them so much, and they have enough energy to bring you tons of joy, but eventually they wear down, and you begin to look at yourself and realize how old you've gotten too. Things that blew your mind years ago start to become outdated, and eventually they're sitting at the dinner table with you, saying words that you haven't heard since Xbox Game Chat. You the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are old now, that's the hard truth. And with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X being the new main platform for video games, it leaves us wondering, how long is the PS4 and Xbox One going to last? The most straightforward way to figure out how long the PS4 and Xbox One have before they kick the bucket is to look over some official company statements. Sony confirmed a while back that the PlayStation 4 will stop being supported in 2025. They plan to have PS4 games off store shelves by the PS5's fourth year. Older PlayStation 4 games will be purchasable, but they won't be making any more games for the platform and will shift their focus exclusively to the PS5. As for Microsoft, Xbox One consoles have been out of production for a few years now because Microsoft shifted their gears to the Series S and X. So from this information alone, we can conclude that by the end of 2025, the PlayStation 5 and Series X will have taken over the gaming market. And honestly, it's about damn time. The current generation consoles came out three years ago, but we've been playing last generation games since 2013 because the Xbox One and PS4 are still supported. The eighth generation consoles have held back a lot of games in modern years that could have really shined if they were just next-gen exclusives. Halo Infinite is a good example of this problem. Halo is a household name because it was the exclusive that carried an entire console. Its open-ended sandbox multiplayer and campaign revolutionized first-person shooters and what they could be. To this day, people are still playing the older games and they hold up so well that more and more people are still falling in love with the franchise. When 3 for 3 announced an open-world Halo game coming out on the new Xbox, People expected it to be a true demonstration of what the current generation consoles could handle. But alas, once the gameplay trailer came out, there were so many glaring graphical issues, and it was about as embarrassing as Skyward Sword's motion controls not working right at E3 2010. Okay, here we see the Deku Bob has popped up here. Now, you have to pay attention because the only way to defeat it is to cut it in the same direction that its mouth is... 3 for 3 improved the graphics drastically before launch, but unfortunately, the big next-gen open-world Halo game we all wanted wasn't what we got. Every spot on the map looked the same, and the exploration was on par with any generic open world title, stretching out the game time with copy and pasted bases and collectibles. Halo Infinite was by no means a bad game, but it wasn't impressive in the slightest. Halo Infinite was an Xbox One game upscaled to look good on Series X. And that's what most current gen games are right now. Last gen games upscaled to look better on the newer hardware. There's not many games that truly test what the PS5 and Xbox Series X are capable of. The new Call of Duty looks really good, but it's also releasing on last generation consoles. And because it's going to be optimized for tech from 2013, the innovation Black Ops 6 will bring to shooters will inevitably be very limited. I've heard the argument many times that game companies should make one console once and for all and stop money grubbing by making more, but it just doesn't work like that. For games to evolve and get better, consoles have to be updated. Many of the greatest video games of all time are great because they innovated. Red Dead Redemption 2 didn't sell more copies than Red Dead Redemption 1 because the first game was already good. It sold more copies because bushes moved when you walked through them. Them. Gameplay seamlessly transitioned into cutscene without any loading screen. Things in the world would just happen to the player naturally, and pretty much everything about Red Dead Redemption 2 sucked up all the power the PS4 and Xbox One could muster to improve on what the PS3 and Xbox 360 couldn't do. Despite all of the video game companies refusing to let go of that 8th generation profit though, there are quite a few new games rolling out exclusively for current generation consoles, and they look incredible. Massive Entertainment will be dropping Star Wars Outlaws in under a week now, and it seems to be utilizing the PS5 and Series X's SSD to achieve seamless loading, kind of like what we saw in Ratchet and Clank A Rift Apart, where when the player flies off into space or onto a planet, there is a loading screen but it is cleverly disguised as gameplay by fogging the view while the world loads in. GTA 6 is probably the best example of a game taking advantage of current gen's technology, with NPCs all doing different things, tons of cars loaded in at once, and visible interiors on almost every building. I understand that a lot of people still play on the PS4 and Xbox One, but after three years of current-gen consoles being out and having a library of mostly PlayStation 4 games, 
I feel like it's time to let go. It's time for video game companies to embrace the current generation and push their project to be as amazing as it can possibly be. And this video is not at all a jab at the PS4 and Xbox One. I believe the 8th generation was one of the best console eras of all time. We got Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, Fallout 4, The Last of Us 2, Detroit Become Human, Elden Ring, and dare I even say Fortnite. The last 10 years for video games has been sweet, but I believe that it's time to move on so that modern day hardware can truly take the torch so we can get another 10 years of impressive, innovative video games. So what do you guys think of all this? Do you think that the 8th generation consoles should still be supported? And if so, why? Make sure to leave your answer in the comments below and I'll respond as soon as I possibly can. As always, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video and make sure to have a good one.